Hello everyone, I'm Magic Dave and this is Sapiens. So it's been a few days since I uh, recorded the last video and I've done quite a few little bits and pieces in that time. I think there's going to be lots of little jobs, that's sort of what I want to do over the next couple of weeks is just sort of fix up all the little broken things and tidy up lots of loose ends, fix up the UI and stuff. So a lot of that's not particularly interesting, but I have done enough now that I thought it was time to just show you what, I was, what I've done and sort of where I'm going from here. So the first thing that I worked on was pathfinding and yeah as I explained in the last video there was a problem where particularly with longer paths they would just fail to find a path uh, because the server would unload the area of terrain in the middle and then they wouldn't be able to find a way through. Now the way that I decided to fix that was to actually calculate the path in smaller chunks and sort of update it as they went along. So I've tested pathfinding uh, over really long distances and they're able to walk sort of many kilometers now, which is you know a huge improvement on before. And it's also quite a lot faster than it was. Uh, the thing with pathfinding really is, you know, there's no silver bullet. You have, to, you have to really optimize it. You have to cater it to your own requirements for a game. And, you know, Sapiens has quite a unique kind of setup and unique requirements. And so, yeah, it's just sort of a matter of, of kind of dealing with issues as they come up and trying to get the best sort of setup that you can with, with the constraints that you have. But yeah, I'm quite, quite happy with where this is at at this point and I can sort of move on from pathfinding and focus on some other things. So when I was working on this pathfinding and trying to debug it and just watch people walking over long distances and stuff, I really realized that it was time to add in a follow camera. And that's something that I really wanted to do quite some time ago, but it's just sort of, you know, kept being pushed down the list. So I went ahead and did that. And now you can actually uh, click on a sapien and, and, and just follow them around. And, uh, you know, the camera sort of keeps up with them. You can use WASD to, to, to sort of rotate your view around them. Uh, it still works quite well in, in fast forward mode as well and sort of keeps up with them nicely and uh, yeah it's all um, really good I actually really really love this 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 view um, to the extent where I kind of decided to integrate it more fully into the game so as you might have noticed when I clicked on the sapien um, thing, things have changed a little bit so previously when you clicked on a sapien if I just go into Photoshop here uh, you got this this inspection panel just came straight up but the real problem with all of this was that it actually blocked your view of the sapien themselves so um, you know you click on a sapien in the of the screen this panel just comes up and blocks totally what what they're doing can't see anything and it just you know it, it just didn't feel like the right thing to do so when I started looking at the follow camera um, mode and how I could maybe integrate it into the game a bit more, it just suddenly sort of stuck out that this is this is how I should do this. So now when you click on a sapien, you get this this action UI. So instead of going straight into the inspection panel, you get this, and you'll get the move move option here. So you can sort of tell them to go somewhere. Um, he's already doing something else. I need to sort of probably prioritize that move order. But um, yeah, so uh, you can queue up queue up certain orders, and then if you click on this, this will be maybe a magnifying glass icon or something, sort of an, an inspect button, then you get the follow cam and it zooms straight to that sapien and you get that same information that you would have had before down here, sort of out of the way. So you can still see what the sapien's up to and you can see all their stats and you can um, still assign their, their skills. Um, I don't particularly like that this is again obscuring your view, so I might sort of put some icons down here is sort of what I'm thinking having things panels come up from below kind of thing out, out of the out to the sides uh, but for now you know this is um, working okay and yeah I think I think this is a lot better you know it still needs work and the, again I'm just going to fill this up with a bunch of garbage to start with and then slowly refine it uh, but overall I'm just really quite happy with this nice kind of cinematic uh, view of what's going on and the ability to kind of keep an, keep a close eye on individuals. So I've decided what I'm going to work on next and it is the clearing interface. So I've hardly shown this at all to you guys uh, because I've known it's been broken for some time. Basically when you want to go and build um, if anything that uses hay, thatch roof or the hay bed or any of these sort of building things, uh, you need to harvest hay and that comes from grass. So you do that by clearing the grass. And uh, the, the whole interface for this and all the UI and, and the general design of it is not, not great. Um, you know, those thatch uh, roofs 
require 16 hay, which means clicking 16 times all around here to try to, uh, to try to queue up all these orders. And that's just not, that's not acceptable. I think um, the solution has kind of presented itself to me by uh, this interface here. Uh, but when you click, you then get this extra kind of, you know, UI to, to fine, fine tune the placement. And I think that that's pretty much where I'm, what I'm going to try to do here. So, you know, you, if you hit clear, you can click and then get an extra user interface that will allow you to expand out an area. And I think that's going to work well, but we'll, we'll have to give it a shot and see. Right, so I've made some good progress with the clearing area expansion. Uh, so I was going to make it so that uh, it sort of worked like this, where you'd sort of drag arrow an arrow out to, to uh, expand the region. But it really, when I started thinking about how that was going to work, it was going to be a bit clunky, and I just wanted it to be a bit sort of easier than that. And yeah, so I decided to scrap that idea, and instead I went with a, uh, a scroll wheel based approach, or a tab, so you can hit tab, and or use the scroll wheel to increase the radius so you go from one to, to three and then up to sort of a larger hexagonal area and then up to a, a slightly bigger one and up to this I think this is the max here uh, and I think that this is going to work quite well so then you just click and you've got a whole bunch of clear orders and yeah you can easily sort of scroll up and down between different sizes and, and get the area that you want and yeah I think um, I think it's going to work so so that's all good uh, you can also cancel so for each sort of click these are all green Grouped. and if I go in and cancel clear all then it will just cancel the, the ones from that click and uh, that's all working fairly nicely. So the next thing that I sort of looked at was the I was just sort of testing a little bit last night and realized that uh, sometimes you're going to want to inspect, you know, get this information here without actually zooming to the, the player over there. You know, maybe you've found, uh, you know, if, if, if you were, look, say, looking over at a tree over here and you're like, oh, I want someone to gather this, and you've got people over there and, and you're sort of thinking, okay, which one should I use? And you want to sort of just look through them. So I actually, I'm now displaying this panel here as well when this, when this is uh, set without having to zoom over in order to see it. Um, which, you know, makes sense. Oh, there's a little bug there. <laughs> but yeah, it makes sense um, to do that. The only thing is that now there's sort of issues because uh, we've got two icons, which is a bit strange, and we've got some inconsistencies in the UI now to do with what happens when you click on things that are not sapiens. And yeah, so I think uh, I'm gonna continue to work on this. I think that this should show up. I think this is a good solution and that maybe I need to rework this a little bit, uh, probably hide that icon, maybe even just make that a hole that you can see through to see what you've just clicked on and to uh, make this a more general user interface that can be used for, for trees and other objects too. Okay, so I thought that since this video is basically focusing on uh, UI, that it might be interesting to see what I've actually done to uh, create all of the UI and, and what my process is and what my code looks like. So for those of you that didn't already know, uh, Sapiens is a uh, is my own creation. It's a custom engine uh, written using C++, and then all of the gameplay and sort of game design and stuff is all written in Lua. So this is the C++ side in Visual Studio. Uh, this is the view kind of parent class that all other views inherit from. Uh, the view itself handles all of the events. It's um, quite sort of, this is all basically bindings for Lua using Lua Bridge. And yeah, it's just got a bunch of uh, bunch of functions to sort of do what you need to do with, with general purpose views. Um, there's no button class. There's no kind of event specific class. Everything's just done in a view. So you can have any view that, that can be a button. All of that's configured on the Lua side. So yeah, all up the view class is about a thousand lines. And then for like a text view, we've got uh, another 300 lines of C++, sort of a lot of it updating sort of Vulkan graphics stuff. You know, there's, there's sort of not much to it really. Okay, so on the Lua side, uh, basically uh, each sort of collection of views or each panel or each kind of area of UI has its own um, Lua module and that's sort of a separate file and I'll, I'll, load, I'll call a load function on that when the game loads so that will kind of do all the difficult stuff of you know, loading up models and images and all that kind of stuff that might take a bit of time and then it's all kind of ready to go. It'll be just generally set to be hidden and then I'll just unhide it when it's needed later. So this is the load function. As far as 
as the kind of hierarchy of views goes, there's just a single um, screen space view for most of the UI and that's created in C++ and then sort of passed down through to Lua. And so we can access that, like this, this game UI um, object, we can grab its view and use that to create sub views, which are then sort of added into the hierarchy. Um, and we don't have to worry about memory management or anything like that. It's all sort of garbage collected or tidied up um, as and when it's required. Yeah, as you can see, you can just sort of unhide, you can set the relative position. Uh, that's one thing that I'm quite uh, pleased with. So this is all sort of done uh, behind the scenes in the C++ code. It'll uh, set up a matrix that's um, derived based on all the parents and everything. So if something moves, if the, the relative view moves, then this will move too. And uh, that's all working extremely nicely. So um, the there's sort of both, without setting the relative view, it'll just be this parent view. So if the parent move, view moved, then this would move. Uh, but you can also set it to be a different view. So in this case, we've got the object image view, which is like the icon that's showing up down here with sort of the sapiens head or the, the tree or whatever. And then we've got the title text view, which was uh, would be underneath it. Now, I always want that to be underneath it. So the title is set to be horizontally centered and below the relative view. And I'm setting the relative view to be that object image view, but you know, it's not its parent. Um, so yeah, I'm scared. I can set those independently. Um, so that works really well. That's all that's required to be able to lay out a bunch of buttons into a grid or you know do all sorts of things. There's really no need for it to be any more complex than that. And I'm finding it to just be extremely powerful and sort of simple. So as far as um, buttons and things go, I've got kind of some standard collections of objects that sort of give it, give a bit more um, flexibility and sort of, you know, I've got like toggle buttons and stuff. And so they, they sort of, you know, there's easier ways to set these up and, you know, they've, they've they've set up the sort of mouse down mouse up functions that handle all the animation and, and all that kind of stuff uh, so yeah i mean it's it's good having this all in lua I, I think that that's the right place to have button sort of functionality that it doesn't need to be in c++ it doesn't need to be engine side you, you can really just configure it all um, with not very much code in um in a scripting language um, and so, yeah, if, I guess as an example, if I wanted to animate, let's just go back in here. If I wanted to animate some property of one of these um, UI elements, then let's find, say this, we can just add a um, update function that um, takes the amount of time passed. And so this will get called uh, before this object itself is rendered. And so I could just say, let's just grab that. Um, we could, you might notice I use copy and paste almost exclusively <laughs> for my uh, coding. That's just my style. I find it works quite well. Um, so we go plus vec3 dt00. Um, so what's that going to be? One pixel per second. We might want to make it 10 pixels per second. And let's just see how that looks. So that should maybe shift this, um, this tree across over time. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's not it's instantaneous, but there we go. And so this, this is, these are all tied um, relative to that icon position. And so they're all shifting across too. So, you know, it's, it's pretty powerful, pretty easy to work with. And, and really, you know, I, I, I don't think that, I mean, I used to actually just dread working on UI uh, when I was working on blockheads and stuff. I sort of, you know, I built up my own UI framework there that um, was all, uh, objective C and it was just awful to work with and even UI kit I just I really struggle to, to do what I want with UI kit um, and you know basically everything I've ever done with UI has been awful and this is wonderful <laughs> so yeah I'm very proud of it but um yeah I, I might go into this in more detail at some point I might even open source it or you know who knows but uh, for now it's just you know I'm focusing on the game and I've just got to try to use it uh, as much as I can and get get the UI done. Um, so the UI changes have gone very well. Uh, so when I click on the on a sapien now, you see that the action UI shows up um, as well as this inspection kind of UI. Um, this now has a bit of transparency, which I just felt was required. I just really wanted it to not kind of block your view of the object entirely. And you know, I'm really not a fan of transparency in UI, and I know that's uh, very common these days, but I'm still not a fan of it. And so I, yeah, try to not use it where possible, but I think this is a case where it is a good idea. 
Uh, the other thing I did was to sort of simplify these so that they're just icons without any text. And uh, given that the icon's currently a placeholders and uh, yeah, it's actually quite hard to know what each thing does. But I'm going to add um, uh, a pop-up that will happen very quickly. When you hover over something, it'll show some text to, to show you what the action is and, and sort of maybe a bit of extra information about each one too. So you'll very quickly learn, once these icons are uh, the correct representation, you'll, you'll learn what they do. So when you actually click on uh, this, which would be a sort of zoom to kind of icon, like maybe a magnifying glass, uh, it now goes into the follow cam mode and you've still got all the um, options down here. You can actually now rename Sapiens. So that's quite a good, um, quite a good little feature that people have been wanting. It was quite easy to add, but I thought it was probably time to do that. Uh, so that's all working. It's also working for um, anything you like. Uh, you can you, you can um, rename trees and bushes and everything and it all saves and, and uh, you know works in multiplayer and all of that. Uh, you can even, if I go over here, you can rename uh, a chicken and uh, let's call him Bok Bok. I used to have a chicken named Bok Bok. Um, and then you can actually follow them around. Um, and so yeah, you've got that sort of, the, the zoom thing works for, for all objects. Um, and I guess so you could sort of use it to, to navigate around if you, if you sort of wanted to as well. It's just sort of an extra option. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it there for this video. Um, yeah, I don't know again what I'll be working on next. Uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff that still needs to be done in these in this early stages of the game kind of thing. Uh, but I think it was really good to work on UI. I think it really needed to be sorted out. And it's, it's just feeling, you know, there's obviously still lots to do, but this is feeling like a more kind of final layout now, whereas before it was just all really just placeholders. So um, yeah, good progress there. So anyway, we'll see what I work on next time and we'll catch you then. Cheers.